And there we go! Hello everyone! I'm sorry I took a little bit more time than I wanted to come in, but we are here at 9.30. Hello, hello, hello. I hope everyone had a good day today. I hope that your evening has been going well and that you are joining me here today or tonight or whenever you're joining me and you're ready to relax and build some really cool stuff. Now, earlier we built this uh, really awesome shuttle right here. This is the Shuttle Endeavor. And it looks absolutely beautiful right now. We, get, we mastered some of the curvatures. We used some different techniques. There were some questions asked. We answered those questions. And now we're going to continue on building this little guy. And we're going to go to about 11. I'm hoping to get uh, some of these boosters finished. And we're going to be adding magnets. And we're going to be using them in a different way than a lot of other people I've seen been using them. My plan is to make everything modular. It means to take off all these little guys here and hopefully be able to take the space shuttle off and all the boosters and stuff. I think it'd be kind of cool to maybe get some pictures uh, with them separating if I can, right? I mean, that'd be kind of cool. But right on. Hey, Shailen. Hello, hello. Sorry about that. I, uh, I'm still trying to work out some of the stuff with the stream. Uh, I'm going to have to work out where I'm going to be able to see the chat a little bit easier in the future. So if you see me uh, lagging a little bit, getting answering some stuff, just know that uh, I will get to you. It won't disappear on me. And uh, yeah, alrighty duty. Let's get going here. Uh, let's go right back to this wing. Now, before you'll remember, I was talking about the importance of trying to get that 3D effect. And if we're not careful, we'll actually get a really nice uh, kind of rippling effect. And we want to avoid that as best as possible. So let's go ahead and move over to this bigger tool here. Um, hmm. You know what? Actually, let's start with this side here first. And we're just going to start working it in just like a little pencil all the way around. Just like that. And uh, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, hey, that's not much of a bend there. Yeah, it's just about getting it started. And then we can work on this a little bit more. Okay. Let's see how that's coming there. That's looking pretty good. We got a little bit of a nice uh, 3D effect happening. It isn't the greatest though, uh, so we're going to work on that a little bit more. Again, we'll actually use our tweezers later uh, to help me uh, get everything straightened back out the way we want them. I just really want to avoid, avoid any kind of warping here. Let's see that. There we go. Okay, now we're just going to do one of those little maneuvers. And yeah, get that little border right there. Really cranking into my mouse pad right now. And yeah, just like that. All right, cool. Now I'm gonna flatten this out a little bit here. Flat, flat, flat. I could also use my bender tool, but I'm going to just use my tweezers for the moment. Okay. Now we're going to just kind of bend this along this because we've already had that suggestion. So it should be pretty easily to, sorry, wow, it should be pretty easy to uh, match the sides here. See how it's uh, really straight there? There's a little bit of warping back here. I'm going to try to work that out. There we go. Bend these guys down 90 degrees. Cool. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and put this on now too. Just gonna line those up. I'm not too worried about it being straight because these little tabs here going into their insertion holes will kind of help us with that whole scenario. Whoa, 
Gotcha. Why aren't you going into the back there? You know what? Let's start with the back one here and then go forward. Sometimes you have to mix things up a little bit. There we go. See? Sometimes it went in the... Oh, it popped out the back. Okay. Well, Mr. Uh, Trixie, Trixie, let me see if I can get you... There we go. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Oh man, I am still Shakerunes. Maybe I'm a little dehydrated or or I need some more coffee. One of the two. It is 9.30. I decided to go with just the one cup because we are uh, we are late night building as we are doing us right now. Not really late night, but you know. Oh yeah, see that? Mexico, right there. Delicioso. Excuse me. Delicious. Okay, cool. So now we've got this whole wing assembly put together. I think that's pretty neat. Uh, you're going to see me do something a little bit of larceny here. That's me reaching across and uh, turning the instructions and realizing that's our first set of instructions done, guys. That is the first whole half of the build all complete i mean we don't really count this page but the rest of it is com you know, complete uh, let's put that on that side and Ooh. okay well hmm you guys get to see the cool thing on the screen and i have realized that that is not big enough so in the future what I'm going to be doing is making it bigger so that everyone can see exactly what we're building. I just got to figure out, um, because there's different size blocks inside the instructions, it kind of makes it really hard for me to crop everything. So um, I'm going to have to figure out a way to do it. I might have just to make different size blocks and maybe just don't have a border or something around them. But borders look nice around things. Okay. Hmm. Really? We're stepping right into the fire, eh? Okay. Well, now that we have the space shuttle complete, we are now going to start working on the boosters. Now, these boosters are just giant cylinders, but we're going to be adding a whole bunch of detail to these cylinders. Um, hmm. It looks like for the most part, though, the detail is actually wrapped around. So I don't see any value in actually putting any of the detail on beforehand. It's probably best to actually install it after I've already shaped it. So, big cylinder, big old cylinder. What could I use to shape it? Would have maybe thought I maybe would have prepared a little bit better for this, but uh, nope. Um, hmm. Well, we know it's a big shape. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start big and work my way down. We're going to use just my lovely little dapping set here to get started. Let's uh, go right to the edge here first. I don't want to accidentally get any, uh, any hot spots, any creases in the metal, especially with all the detail we have here. There we go. That's our first attempt. Let's just go over here and kind of unify everything there is a little bit of warping happening there ah let's see here we want these to be perfect now we're moving to a smaller tool <laughs> let's see i'm gonna have to roll this very soon just to make sure that we're getting equal equal shapings here all the way around we don't need warping there and we can actually minimize warping by just pressing equally across the piece even if you actually end up warping a side here you can always unwarp it uh, just by adding a little bit more pressure okay now we are going to work our way down in size I'm pretty sure that guy's yeah bigger than this one so we're gonna go right to here okay this one here 
You know, I have to be kind of careful when I'm talking on live because there's some things I would normally be joking about. And uh, I want to be trying to mean a little bit friendly. I made some comments in the past about college and, and rolling things. And I got one or two private messages that were, I would not, not say upset, but they reminded me that younger people watch me too. So fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. But if you're an expert college person, you might have a good time rolling these guys up and uh, making it a little bit easier. Um, okay, cool. Now let's see here. There was a gentleman the other day that actually, uh, there was a company that posted a, uh, it was on Instagram, I think, and they posted these muffins. And he actually is a really good gentleman. He posts a ton of, uh, of Metal Earth content, Metal Model content. He's actually very active. Um, out there. I still won't, I won't mention his name out of respect, but um, he does some really cool stuff again. Really great modeler. Um, some cool pictures. And the other day he made, um, was it cinnamon rolls? And I made a comment on the cinnamon rolls and I actually didn't realize at the time that it were special cinnamon rolls, but I bet you those were really good. <laughs> the company looks pretty cool too. They do, they have a really active, uh, an active uh, modeling campaign and um, the lady there who runs it seems to be pretty cool, so. Yeah, I'm not going to mention names. Let's just do that. Rolly, rolly. Rolly, rolly. Yeah, I'm taking my time. I am really taking my time with this, and that's because uh, there's no need to rush this part. Okay, I think I am uh, pretty pretty happy with where I am. I think I'm about ready to connect these sides. I just don't want to have any hot spots up here. Hmm. This area down here. I am being a little overcautious and I know that. Um, just trying to roll this out here. A little bit more on the sides here. There we go. Okay. There we go. We're really trying to maintain that really nice circular structure. And you see how, like, if I do this right now and just kind of force it, you'll see how a teardrop forms. We don't want that, especially because there's a little spine that runs down the center. So I'm really trying just to slowly suggest it. I wish I had a longer dowel or something. That would have been a thing to have here, that's for sure. Okay. I think I can do one of these scenarios now and roll it on the inside like this. And that should help me get the shape. Can I do it like that? Nope. There we go. That's the ticket. Ooh, Ticket to Ride. That's a great game. Great game. Anyone out there who's looking for a family game night to play, if you're having a hard time looking for something, I know a lot of people have been playing it. It's a very popular game, but trust me, that is a fun one to play. I love it. That one in Catan. Catan's been really good too lately. go okay just like that and we're ready to meet now in this case because I am looking to kind of hide the um, I'm going to be putting magnets inside of this. My plan is to hide these tabs. I'm going to try to, at least. But I don't know if I can because these guys up here, maybe, they're going to be pushing outward. Hmm, I think it's still a possibility. We're going to do it anyway. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these tabs right here, go right to the edge, and I'm bending them down. And that's going to create a little bit of a lock when I bring these over. Okay, that's the that's the plan. Mm 
Okay. There we go. And just trying to get this correct. I am really, really... I'm gonna, the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do it a little bit faster. I'm just really trying to uh, be careful with this one. Okay, so these need to be bent back just a little bit more. And because I actually already have them bent, all I need to do is actually just push them just a little bit like that. And now those tabs should be able to get in place. Yeah, see? We rockin', we got this. We got this. Hell yeah. Awesome, 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 awesome. Whoop, 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 whoop. We don't wanna squish the burrito. We just wanna close the burrito. We don't wanna squish the burrito. We just want to close the burrito. Actually, it looks like a giant cigar. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. Not really, actually. It's nowhere near that. Let's go. Okay, there we go. Booster looking good. Now what I'm gonna do is try to reach here into the center and just bend these tabs over. I wanna make sure they're well connected. that down here on this guy too i gotta work on securing the camera here a little better too so you don't get to get the shaky cam last thing i want is a game of thrones season eight kind of style thing where you can't see anything and it's just shaking all the time i mean i could i could say game of thrones but really i could also say lord of the rings i went back and watched some of those uh films a little bit and you don't realize how much shaky cam is really in it until you start watching it and you're like man like I don't remember this back in the day watching this. It's funny sometimes how movies can date. Okay, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with this. It's not the most circular uh, or cylindrical, I guess you would say. Um, yeah, cylinder. I don't know why I think sphere when I say cylinder lately, but that is a thing. Let's do this. Go around. Go around. I really just want a consistent like. I really want a consistent shape. It's too bad I don't have something I can just shove in here that would be of similar size. A wooden dowel would be really good. Um, I should get a set of those and just have them on hand, different sizes. Maybe do a video on how I make them. That'd be cool. All right. Me likey, me likey a lot. Let's move on to the next piece. The next piece here is just a simple little add-on. This guy here, we're gonna go right to the edge again and we're going to bend down either side. Now you're gonna forgive me here, after I bend these tabs, um, my plan is to take a sip of my coffee. Now at home, if you guys have any questions at any point in time about Metal Earth or any other kind of hobby that we take care of here on the show, um, that's like, you know, wooden models, uh, even some of the diamond brick stuff, feel free to ask. I'm always here for you. Also, too, if you have any suggestions for the show, if you have any suggestions for things we should take a look at or really kind of cool projects, the more unique, the better. Um, I will definitely love to take a look at them. Uh, we have some really interesting projects coming up here on the show. Um, one of the projects we're going to be taking a look at, like I mentioned in the last stream, is going to be the Moyo Stores uh, Chameleon. They have some really cool stuff. Uh, lately that's been coming out their way. We also have some ads on there. Oh, sorry, correction. We have some, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, shoot a monkey. Oh, what's it called? Oh, well, you know what? I'm taking a coffee break for a second here and I'll remember that in just a moment. Sorry guys, just give me one moment here. There we go. Yeah, sorry. We actually do have a code there you can use on there. And what that is, is code Groove, and that will get you 10% off. And that also helps the channel, which I think is pretty cool. The Moyo store actually uh, have been really awesome with me. And uh, they're actually the first people to offer me 
a uh, promo code with them, so I think that's pretty cool. There we go. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that now. All right. Now we can move on to the next piece here, which is part 25. Part 25 is a giant circle, or a, uh, we're gonna be making this into a ring, if you will. Take this right here. And we're gonna wrap it around, just like that. Pressing on either side. And you'll see that I'm not really so much pressing on the center over here, because that pretty much forms itself. What I'm really trying to do is put the pressure on either side of this piece. Um, and the reason for that is, again, I'm trying to avoid that like horrible teardrop shape. And if I put enough pressure on either point, uh, it should really avoid that. Now this one, I think, is going to be a tad too small. But that is okay, because actually, these tabs meet. But before I meet them, I'm going to take this little guy, bend it forward. Take this little guy over here too, bend it forward as well. There we go. Just like that. That looks pretty cool, right? Uh, now, the other thing we're going to do here too is take these little guys and we're going to be bending them in. Again, we want to grab as much of the tab in our tweezers as possible. It's because if we don't, part of this detail will be actually hanging off of our booster. Now, taking note, this little guy here is going to be on top. This little guy down here is going on the bottom. <laughs> now, it's not the very bottom. And that's what I'm verifying here. It's actually going to be right here. The very bottom is reserved for another piece of detail. This one is going right here. If it will let me. I'm actually trying not to pull out my pointed tweezers. Um, I don't know why I'm punishing myself in doing this, but uh, I really just don't want to. So, uh, but you know, you really should have the right tools for the job. It's kind of hard to actually uh, secure these tabs I see. I actually misread the instructions. You're actually not supposed to close this until the very end, which actually makes sense um, because trying to get these without long tweezers would be kind of impossible. <laughs> Am I going to be able to get some of the center ones here too? Yeah, I'm going to be able to get those. See, I make mistakes live too all the time, or I make mistakes all the time, I should say. Uh, there was a comment a couple weeks ago in one of my videos asking, you know, how many times do I, you know, remake builds and stuff. Um, I don't. I've never, and I'm going to knock on wood, never actually had to do that. I have had builds go not the right way for me. Um, I, if you guys remember, there was a video that I did a while ago that um, it wasn't the White House. It was the Capitol building, and I accidentally broke a piece on that one. Um... I've broken some pieces here and there. Uh, there was a Batmobile that I did, and um, I don't think I did a video though on that one because I haven't done the Batman series yet. Um, but I did make a Batmobile, and I broke the stick shift on that one, and that kind of sucked. Made that for my dad. Let me see here. When my father was younger, he was a really big fan. He's still alive. He's not dead. He, uh, just to clarify, um, he was a big fan of Batman. And uh, his parents got him a ride-on, like, classic, like, Batmobile. And uh, so when I saw Middle Earth have the classic Batmobile, I went and made it for him. Um, when my grandparents passed away, we actually went back to Georgia, and when we were in Georgia, I looked underneath the home 
um, to see if I could find the Batmobile because he apparently didn't sell it. But unfortunately, when we went there, I looked everywhere. I looked high, I looked low, and I mean like, I don't know, this place was pretty cool because it was built. Um, and they were like pretty much the uh, first people to be there. So it was neat to be in that place and uh, it was really cool to kind of go underneath the home and, and take a look around in this like kind of crawl space. But unfortunately, I did not find the Batmobile. I knew I was gonna run into a problem with this part. Um, I might actually have to undo the uh, undo those tabs I did in the center because I don't know if I'm going to be able to close this. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get those in there, unfortunately, because what's going to happen has to happen is that these guys have to be stretched. So that sucks. So let's see if I can get these guys to undo here. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See. Sometimes, guys, you just gotta undo your mistakes. <laughs> okay. Mm. Wow, these ribbons are a pain in the butt, though, eh? Okay. Taking a sip of the coffee. Trying not to drink by the microphone, but I unfortunately got a little carried away there with the coffee and spilled it on myself. So that's fun. Ha ha ha! See though, I you just I just need to take a break because look, guys, first try, first try after that little sip of coffee, after spilling it on myself, and what do we got? Success! I really need to get some like cool buttons on this live stream that I can press when cool things happen. Just get really ridiculous with it. It'd be so much fun. Also gonna try to get this on uh, on Twitch. I just gotta figure out how to stream on multiple platforms at the same time. It just requires me, you know, going to YouTube University, watching some cool creators talk about the craft and learning about it. You know, that's one of the cool things about uh, YouTube, one of the best things about it. I know a lot of people talk about it, but there's pretty much something available for everybody on there. You're not going to get, you know, the full education that you might get at a school on the topic, but you'll get at least a working knowledge of some of the things. I wouldn't recommend doing all the things you see on YouTube, but, you know, whenever you ever have a plumbing issue and you say something small, that's, that's pretty cool. Need to figure out how to operate a uh, live stream protocol? Guess what? It's online. And there's some pretty cool people on there that go, uh, that try really hard to teach everybody in different uh, kind of skill levels. Now, let's uh, see here. Um, one of my favorite things to do when I'm bending these guys is to use my tweezers like this. And the reason why I do that is because uh, it makes it a lot easier for me to get these little details bent without, you know, destroying them. Um, my tweezers are pretty straight so all I have to do is just grab them and I'm really putting a lot of pressure here uh, on my tweezers to hold this little part in place but once we got that like just pretty much flush I think that looks pretty good uh, we just flip the piece around here and we can get the other side it's actually only connected on a few uh, few pieces here And there we go. Okay, I am bending the living crap out of this. <laughs> it is so absolutely thin, this metal right here. And uh, 
got to be careful, because if I'm not, I'll accidentally bend it all crooked. There's so many small details on it. You have to forgive me, I went a little silent there, and that's because I was concentrating, ladies and gentlemen. I was concentrating. Getting over here again, this little piece for some reason didn't bend. Wow, this is not looking good at all. I'm going to have to really get in here and fix that. Okay. I think that's okay. I'm not the happiest with how that went, but I think that once I actually place it into the rocket, I'll have a better way of, of actually forming it. This looks awful. <laughs> this looks absolutely awful, but um, I'm sure we'll be able to clean it up uh, once we put this on here. Let me just uh, get this going. I, uh, one moment here, everyone, I do apologize. Sorry about that, everybody. We're good to go now. My little my little girl here to be brought into the room. So let's go ahead and just try to work this out. This guy is going to go on the top. Okay, just like that. And now I can go on this side of the rocket here and just place that in there like that. Grab this one, place it in like that. Come on you, there we go. And now finally, you sir, just like that, cool. All right, so now that that's all in there, we can actually go through and just clean this up like that. And uh, still not the greatest. It looks like the piece in the middle here didn't get as much of a form as the other part. So if I tidy that up a little bit, I don't want to bend too much. I'll make sure they bend equally on both sides. Sometimes when you squeeze a piece like that, uh, the one side will bend more than the other and it just doesn't look good. So like right now, this little guy here is too far. So I'll lift. Ah, oh, shoot a monkey. Do that. Let me go ahead and secure these before I start to actually doing any kind of the detail work. There we go. Uh, key thing to know here too, guys, is that uh, there's a little cap here. That little cap there is going to go on the top. Uh, it doesn't go on the bottom. Very important, the cap goes on the top, not the bottom. go just making sure every one of these is actually tied down there we go cool all right now that those are tied down let's go through here there we go cool there, that looks way better now. See, it just took a little bit of time and concentration and we got her down, guys. I love it. That actually doesn't look too bad at all, especially if we clean her up even a little bit more. I'm not entirely, I am not, uh, I'm not angry with it. I'm not totally impressed with it, but I'm not 
angry with it. Let's move on to the next piece, which is just as complicated as the last piece, but a little bit longer. And hopefully I can actually do this in a lot less time. Um, because this time we know that we have the front piece here that has a little piece to bend. We know the center here has a little piece to bend, um, which I accidentally missed. So let's get back to that. Take this little guy, bend her down. Why are you being so tricky tricky? Wow, man, this is not an easy piece to bend. The metal is just, it has so many little bits of detail in it that when you go to actually bend it, it doesn't want to bend. Not complaining, just stating. Uh, let me just go here. And, watcha. Yeah, see? You might think you win, but I got this. There we go. Cool, cool. Thank you for the support out there. I appreciate it. The whoop whoops. Okay, there we go. And now I can get this kind of leveled out. That looks a lot better than the last one. Um, all I'm saying, and we did it in half the time, so that's a that's a win-win. Um, okay, now this guy here uh, goes towards our bottom, and we need to make sure that that little clip there goes on the bottom. I put this on the wrong side. Did I did I do a silly? It looks like I may have done a silly. Well, uh, what we're gonna see in a second because I don't think unless these all line up the same. Um, hmm. This has three. Yeah, one, two, and three, which would this would make be part twenty six. 26 goes on top, which we just put 26 on top. So I must have gotten my pieces mixed up because these guys only have two tabs. See? One and two. That's that's four. I should say four tabs, while the ones over here have six tabs. So I just got my pieces mixed up. That's what happens when you cut out all your pieces and don't necessarily have them labeled out correctly. Um, there was a gentleman uh, who made mulling boards a while ago, and I thought that was a great idea. He got the idea from Adam Savage. Um, Adam Savage, I know you all know who he is. Great dude again. Um, one of the best makers of all time, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, great idea on the nulling boards. They make life a lot easier on projects where you have a ton of parts. It's, uh, actually, going back to Moyo there for a moment. Those builds have a ton of parts in them. And if you don't have any kind of like storage bins or something to help you out with those ones, it can be a real pain in the butt. Not as bad as diamond paintings, like you guys know about those, those diamond paintings are kind of cool, especially if you can find some uh, neat designs to do. Um, they take a long time to do. They're an ultimate puzzle in my opinion. Like if you want something that has a lot of pieces, it's going to take you a long time to do, but has a cool result. I think those can be uh, definitely up your alley. However, it's important to know that those things have like literally thousands of pieces and um, you're going to be squinting in some cases to make sure that everything gets into the right spot. I actually have some to do. I've had them actually for a few years now. Um, I just haven't done them. The uh, interest on the channel too has been mostly with metal models, so I, I try to keep to what people are, are watching. Cool. I am happier with this one. Let's see if we can get this one done up here. That little tab there goes on the bottom. Now this should just go right into place. Yep, doodles, yep, doodles. Wow. 
It's almost 11 and I, or not really, but close. And we, I feel like I haven't done anything. Get my sharp tweezers out there and stop playing games. The thing about the sharp tweezers is they don't have, like, you see how these guys here have a little rounded front? My sharp ones allow me to grab the tab and basically throw them into the, uh, throw them in there, into their little insertion holes. But we don't need no stinking sharp tweezers. We got her. Okay, and the other ones are right here. Want to make sure I'm getting a good seal on these guys. Occasionally, you might hear my little girl in the background here. It's Lykaloo. You might hear little Lykaloo here giving out a couple of snores and or a couple of deep breaths. Just know that is not me. That is that is an American Bulldog in the background giving a little bit of night love. She's going right now. I would uh, turn it around, but, uh, you know, working on puzzles. Working on puzzles. Cool. Um, again, not super satisfied with this right now. We got a little bit of, uh, little bit of a wave happening there. Trying to fix that by pressing this in the center like that. There we go. Basically, what I'm trying to do is use the center here of this part. And I'm using that to help me kind of form the borders. And uh, if I push it down a little bit, it kind of helps me get everything kind of centered. But that is an extremely hard part to uh, to get completely lined up correctly. Um, interesting. I have to keep that in mind. For the next booster, I'm going to see if I can use a little bit of a different technique for that uh, that last part there. We have to bend on the other booster. Anyway, now that we got this little thing all here lined up, it looks like we are clear. Excuse me, we are clear to put this back in here. So now I'm going to come back inside. I'm going to bend my tab and make sure that they are straight. There we go. Come on the other side. Same thing. Just a little touchy touchy. There we go. And one and two, just like that. Now I'm going to go in the center here, grab her, and just make sure. Yeah, she's secure, just like that. Come on the other side, same thing. Are we in the insertion hole? We are. So many jokes in metal modeling. So little time. There we go. Okay, our booster is pretty, uh, pretty smashed. Oh man, I didn't realize that I accidentally went through here and uh, kind of disarrayed this whole thing again. I'm really going to have to clean this up in the pictures before I get it all done. I'm gonna have to go through and just uh, really kind of like line it all up again, but I really want to move on. So we're going to do that. Just know that, um, that is ugly. I know it's ugly and, uh, we'll, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> okay. Now let's move on to the cool stuff. Let's make some cones. I mean, just kind of clean up my little area here, push things aside, take another little, uh, little less little go of my coffee here. Now that is iced coffee. Alrighty. And now we're going to go ahead and make this little cone. The way we're going to do this is taking our tool and just kind of rolling it here. I want to make sure the music isn't too loud. I am trying to uh, still work on the levels and make sure everything is kind of rolling right. Please let me know 
um, if the music is too loud or if my voice is too loud or any of that jazz. So the way I'm doing this one is I'm kind of making a point here, um, like the little little point there, and I'm actually just kind of doing a little roll rooney like this. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm just trying to get the start of the shape. So again, I'm using a piece here, using my finger to hold the point, and then it's kind of going around that point, just like that. And that kind of gives me a nice little start. And now I'm going to use the multiple bend method. This is one of my favorite methods to do. Um, I find it extremely effective. Now, um, you can see that we've kind of only gone about halfway here. But we need to go all the way. So we got to start making some what I like to call big bends, big decisions, big commitments. Um, so let's go ahead and start doing that. You can kind of see on the top there how there's a little bit of a circular top. That right there represents what we're going to actually have to do. So we know that this one side is going to have to get a lot more bent. I'm just really worried about developing a hot spot, which I already kind of did there. Let me just do that. Cool. Okay. And I kind of rushed that one. Um, I don't recommend doing what I just did there. Um, oh, shoot. Do I want to connect it with the tab on the outside or tab on the inside? Hmm. The instructions don't really say. Actually, they do. They say to actually put it through the inside. They said to go uh, on the. Sorry, on the outside in. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So we're, what we're going to do is kind of flatten the area here where the tab insertion hole is. Well, thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it. Sorry for the delay. I really should try to bend this tab a little bit more. That's an example of actually uh, when you don't bend the tab enough. So what I did there, or I don't go close enough to the edge. I actually went pretty close to the edge and bent it over, but because I didn't go all the way to the edge, there was like a little bit of a hump. That was preventing it from actually getting into the insertion hole because it was too far, uh, too far this way here on the left. But now that I've went ahead and bent it down straight, you can kind of see how there's a little, little hump there. It was way more predominant. You can actually see how it pushes itself away from the insertion hole. I hope you can see that at least. Now, um, this is what I say, this is what I mean by it's so important to go right to the edge and bend them down. Otherwise, that little lip will just cause havoc. And uh, it can also be the cause of spaces inside of your pieces. So if you're like me and you're on the war on gaps, you want to um, basically eliminate that little ledge and then go over. You'll realize you have to bend this over more and you might have to be a little bit more aggressive with the way that you bend this half too. And again, we can always correct it, but just as long as you don't make any like uh, any lines in the metal, you should be okay. You should be able to go back and, and, and figure it out. So there we go, we got that little guy in there. Um, now we inserted it in on this side, so we're gonna fold it back this way towards, um, towards the other pieces here. There we go. Now, uh, there's not much of a gap there. That's pretty good, right? See that seam? Um, so again, if we would have had that little uh, that little ledge there, if we would have left it, it would have been a nice little gap here. But this is pretty sealed. It's about as, about as good as you're going to get on that. Um, 
Now what I'm going to do is to try to create a little bit of a better cylinder is I'm going to use my dapping set here which has a nice little rounded edge that will help me out. I'm also going to try to use my fondant tool here. Yeah, there we go. That's good. That's good. And one more for the deeper part inside. There we go. Do a little roundy roundy. Do one on the big side, guys. Cool. There we go. All right. Now, uh, what we're going to do here is just insert a rune on top. And the way that we're going to do that is by taking all of these tabs, again, going right to the edge, and we're going to bend them down. Bend down, and bend down. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is locate the seam, which is right here. And I'm going to try to line up the seams the best I possibly can. And that's because... Um, Again, uniformity looks good. We just try to make everything look nice. Actually, you know what? Because we have a spacing, it's actually better for me. I actually really should have waited um, before I did that. Um, to avoid warping this cone, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this tab and bend it up slightly, just like that. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm actually going to take this one here too and bend it up just slightly too. And that's going to help me be able to get all of my tabs in the right spot. Be mindful that you do have that little detail that was a real pain in the butt to form on the uh, back hand here. So if you're pushing, just be mindful of this little, little guy here. Now see, we get to this spot and you're like, Distorted cone, what are you going to do? Why are you French uh, accent? I don't know, but that is a thing. And uh, so this is an issue, right? Like we can't really get that in there. Um, now, if we lift this piece, like I said before, we lift it, you see how we get pretty close, right? Um, well, now what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna bend this tab back a little bit more, just like that. And that's gonna allow us to get pretty close to it and with any bit of luck, luck at all, we should be able to get the tab into the insertion hole. And don't make me a liar, don't make me look stupid. <laughs> Actually, what we'll do is just take that back a little more like that. And there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Don't, okay, you know what? You're just doing this because you know you don't like me right now and that's fine. I understand your emotions. Let me just coerce you into my ideals and uh, eventually you'll understand that you're supposed to go into the insertion hole. Oh my lord. A little bit more of a bend there. We're so close. Hey! Whoop, 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 whoop. We did it. We got it on there. All right, let's just take this. Um, now the funny thing would be like if I was supposed to have inserted that like instead of doing what I'm doing now that would have been kind of funny but you know actually it probably would have looked better because now we got these little silver things on the side here um, but uh, I'm gonna keep my party Hmm, household tools. That is a good question. As you know, that's something I like to talk about a lot. There is a whole bunch of really cool household tools that you can use to uh, create these models. Uh, one of my favorite things to use in the house is actually a spoon. And that's for something that we're gonna be doing right now, which is these little uh, cylinder pieces. Now, as you saw before, with some of the more pointier triangle bits here, it's kind of hard to get a nice little rounded shape. And, um, what we can actually do if we have a little of a pushy surface, kind of like I explained earlier in my previous video, we can actually round these really easily. Um, normally, you would sit here and have to, uh, if you don't have uh, a mouse pad at home, you have to sit here and kind of slowly bend this and make sure you try to get every single one of these guys bent. That takes time, nothing wrong with it. Um, but for me, what I like to do is take a tool like this and just press a little bit into it. And Bob is your uncle. We pretty much have shaped every little bit of it. Now you're saying, um, you know, the edges haven't met yet, but that just requires a little bit more pressing. There we go. 
see how we perfectly shape this piece? It's almost perfectly round. Um, there's nothing too crazy going on. This is what I'm talking about. I love that little maneuver and you can do that with a spoon, which is so cool. Um, not only with a spoon with this particular piece, but uh, one of the most popular models I think is probably R2-D2 and R2-D2's um, model has a dome on the top and notoriously uh, you see guys and uh, I mean guys in general but um, you see builders out there I should say um, builders in general as their first build you often see that little dome kind of misshapen nothing wrong with that that's kind of the mark of the trade and uh, if you really want to get a nice dome if you take a spoon and round it off like that you'll be surprised how really nice of a dome you can get and I actually got that idea from I believe it was a Korean gentleman um, and I would have to look at his channel again and I hope he's still making models he used a little uh, he used a little crab spoon actually correction it wasn't on YouTube that was in the subreddit that was in the metaller subreddit if you guys haven't gone over there yet you definitely should it's a pretty cool little community um, they got some pretty awesome admins over there too I've been a part of that community for quite a long time, actually, since before I even started the channel. Um, it's kind of where I first started posting all of my models and stuff. That's kind of where I got the idea to kind of, well, one of the ideas was to start doing this. All right. Let's see. Um, if you don't have, like, say, something like this, like a cake tool, you could actually also use a marble. Marbles are great for getting domes as well. And um, you could also do what I just did there. If you took a marble and just kind of like rolled it with your finger, you would get a similar similar shaping. Probably not as much control as I have with this guy, but it is, it is doable. Markers, Crayola markers are also a great tool to have on hand. Now these guys here with part number 29, we're gonna be putting them into their insertion holes. And uh, I kind of messed up here again. I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself quite a bit today. I need to slow down and take a look at the instructions because, again, um, I'm only going to make this mistake once on the next booster. You know, I won't have the same problem. Although, depending on what time we're finished here, I might actually build that um, off camera. And then tomorrow, we'll build the big stuff and finish up. Just trying to get all the way around here. Same kind of thing, just kind of stretching it, putting into place, stretching, put into place. Once you make it all the way around, we can then secure this guy last. And that, my friends, is how we get the booster on. I'm going to just secure this first. And now I'm gonna bend these guys down um, with hopefully not accidentally popping them out in the process. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. I like it. I like it. Um, not perfectly cylindrical, but we can work on it by pushing the inside outward. Why are we talking like this? I don't know. There we go, though. There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, because I'm going to be insert... <gasps> okay, I can't forget about that because we are getting close. We are getting so close. We are getting so close. Um, 
Let me just take this over here. I will do this now so I don't forget. Whoosh! Magnets! These magnets are going to be going inside of the booster. Now, ask me how magnets work? I don't know. But uh, we will just place it inside here. And then, by just pressing it down. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. Down, down. There we go. Awesome. Cool. Look at that. Look at that. And uh, we want to make sure that it's as close as possible to the center of the seam. Uh, the reason why is we don't want it shifting too, too much. Too much, yes. We don't want it shifting. Uh, if we shift too, if it shifts too much, um, then this booster will be off center uh, from where it's supposed to be. Uh, but I think the magnet right now is about here, and that should be good. It's not here. It's here, you silly goose. It's right here. That's where you want it to be. Not on this side. If you put it on this side, the magnet's going to go like this. There's going to be stuff everywhere. People are going to laugh at you. You don't want that. So we're going to put it on this side. There we go. There are going to be asking you about magnets and how they work, and you're not going to have an explanation, so pay attention. Alrighty, now that we got that, we can move on to this. And this is actually pretty simple. This is part 30. Same thing as we did last time. We're going to take part 30, do a little roll of rooney <laughs> yes, uh, still building. You know what? I, uh, I I haven't been building all day. I just I was on for a little bit. Came back on there. Lego reviews. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I I definitely wish I could have built more uh, earlier, but it is what it is. Thank you for joining me, though. I actually mentioned you earlier in the stream. I was just saying, um, you know, for Valentine's Day, uh, Lego reviews. My. Uh, the beautiful girlfriend that I have got me a really cool gift, and uh, it is—it's really neat. I'm excited to build it um, and put it on the channel. It's gonna be my first Lego review on the channel, and it's a uh, Bobo Fett helmet. Super excited to build it. Super excited to build it. But at first, I have some obligations to do first. I got to do some other things, but yeah. Pretty cool. Um, here. Like, look at this. Look at this Mr. Oh, hold up. Sorry about that puppy on there. But, like, look at that. That's awesome, right? Like, I mean, such a cool gift. Anyway. Super excited to take a look at that. Super excited to build it. And uh, with recently finishing the Boba Fett series, which... <laughs> it was okay. I actually liked it. It had some cool moments in it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Mandalorian is definitely carrying the franchise right now, right? <laughs> Let's do this. And... There we go. Cool. Oh, shoot a monkey. Almost made a mistake. Something important to note here, guys. You don't want to accidentally put this on the wrong way like I just did. Uh, you want the paint facing down um, because you want to, you're going to see, maybe I'm wrong here. No, no, no. You're going to see that on the bottom. So uh, we want to make sure that we have the white side of the paint on the bottom here. Okay. So that's the white on this side. You want the silver on this side and again the reason for that is we want to see that detail on the bottom let's go ahead and bend these guys over cool all right now we can grab this booster taking a look at the chat there I actually have a couple of really cool projects coming up um, in regards to metal models. Um, I got my hands on some neat ones that uh, I've been seeing out in the metal sphere for a while that I've been wanting to build. They're not metal earth models. Um, I did want to try this year to kind of branch out a little bit and try some other uh, brands. 
Uh, MU has been talking with me a little bit on the uh, old Instagram. They're really cool people over there. And uh, they've been showing me some really neat builds that they're working on. Um, so I'm thinking about showing off some of their stuff. I have to uh, get my hands on it though. Um, we have to talk a triumph about that and see if I can get some of my hands on from them. Let's see here. Yeah, look at that. We got our little booster here done, guys. So we, we've done one, but now we got to do another one, um, which is pretty much the same thing all over again. Now, typically when I do my uh, my uh, show, this is where I would be like, you know, super cut, bang, we're done both boosters. But this time, because we're live streaming, we got to do both boosters. So let's move on to it. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy down here. Move my lovely little magnet over here. And we're going to grab this piece right here. Same thing as before, but this time we're going to be a little bit more aggressive with everything because, uh, you know, we're going to try to try to speed it up a little bit. Um, I don't want to go too crazy on speed though because I still want this to look very nice. The whole point of these models is to build them and enjoy building them and uh, make them look good, right? So if we rush them, then what's the point? There we go. Kind of do a little roll of Rooney. I just know that uh, viewers at home, people that are watching this in the future, um, you know, if you're watching this because you're struggling on trying to get these pieces um, built the right way, uh, or if you're just chilling out with me on a on a Saturday night or Friday night, hanging out with me, I don't know why you'd be doing that on a Saturday, Friday night, but you're more than welcome to do that. You will know that I care. There we go. All right. Um, I'm going to leave this like this for right now because we know we're going to be adding some more pieces to it. Uh, this guy right here is our three piece, um, but we actually are going to take that little tiny guy first. Let's go ahead and get that little tiny guy. Whoops. I'm playing hockey. Again, just grabbing both sides here, going right to the edge, bending this guy down. I should call this the boosters video. I'm going to go through and rename and uh, actually put some different thumbnails on these videos. And um, that way they kind of describe what each one's doing. Cool. Remember guys, if you're enjoying yourself, if you're enjoying this video, if you're enjoying building with me, hanging out with me tonight, do me a favor, drop a like there. That does help the algorithm know that you enjoy the content. And also lets me know that you're enjoying it. If you don't like it, you know, press the dislike button. That helps me too. Also, feel free to feel free to drop a comment later on down the road in any of the videos. I try to do my best to be interactive with everyone that leaves a comment. I don't always get the notifications. Uh, sometimes I'll go into the uh, YouTube studio and I notice there's a whole bunch of comments that I haven't either seen and um, I'll try to look through them and see if there's any questions that haven't been answered. But I do know that most time, most of the time people are asking questions. Um, you're kind of building right then and there. So um, if I don't help you within like the first 24 hours, I know you're probably already figured it out, but I still try to give you something uh, if you haven't done it. You'd be surprised how many people don't know that uh, Metal Earth will actually replace any builds that you um, any builds that you accidentally break. Um, that's actually a really cool thing. Um, not every company does it, um, but if you ever have a problem, like if I was to snap this piece right now because I'm just entirely infuriated with these little with uh, with these little pieces, um, if I was to accidentally snap it, Metal Earth uh, would be very kind and they would send me another part. And it's not just me, it's you too. If you break a piece, they will send it to you. I'm just going to make a little bit of an email to them on their site there, and they will do that. I think that's really cool of them to do. I'm not too sure if um, of the other metal model companies do that. I just I, I really know that Metal Earth does that. They've been very public about doing that. So far, though, I got to say, 
I wouldn't necessarily recommend this build for a, uh, a new person right away. Um, just because, I mean, actually, I don't know. We're kind of running into all the basics of things in metal model building, right? We got some cones. We got some cylinders so far. We got some interesting edging. I just feel like if you've never built a metal model before, and I try to think of it like if I have never built one of these before, would I be turned off by the complexity of this build? Um, you know, I have the patience to kind of work on some of this stuff. Like, I, I as you guys have seen, I, I love the, like, watchmaking uh, stuff. I, I, I love that kind of thing. So I think that puzzle makers, especially new puzzle makers, are uh, puzzle builders that like uh, a hybrid combination of 3D puzzles and models would really... Um, would struggle on the first start of this, but I feel like you would, you would understand it and get really into it. Um, but if you've never done any kind of modeling before and you just grab one of this guy right here off the, off the shelf um, and you expect to build it, I think um, I think little Jimmy's going to be struggling. Little Susie's going to be calling her mom or calling her dad in to help her with some pieces. Especially these guys right here, man. These are these are brutal. Okay, now we're back to bending the awful piece again here. Same thing as before. We're gonna go and just uh, grab this as much as possible. I'm actually gonna go as, oh, I'm not gonna go anywhere if I just keep dropping the piece. Uh, we're gonna go all the way up here to the top, top, top. Right about there. Okay, yes, right about there. And we do these. No, that one little guy down here did not bend. Why? Why? There we go. For those wondering, uh, this is what I sound like when I normally build anyway. It's just not normally with you with me. <laughs> Shoot a monkey, man. This is n this is not a fun piece. I'll be very happy once I'm done. Do I have any more of these little scrawny pieces after this? It doesn't look like it. So you know what? Let's take our time to enjoy the complicated part because once we're done with this complicated part, we're pretty much done with the complicated piece. And then uh, then the complication's gone and we'll be in easy street. So let's enjoy the complication. Okay, so I see what it is. It's the center piece here that isn't bending again. So the same problem I had on the one piece I'm having on this piece here, it seems like the um, the little pieces, or I should say the center here, the little preparations are either not perforated enough or they are just, it's just the metal's too thick. Um, it's having a really hard time bending. Let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna give in. I'm gonna give in, and I'm gonna see if I can get another tweezer set here that will help me here. Uh, just give me uno momento. Whatcha? So a lot of you guys might know this, but uh, I've actually had these tweezer sets for a little while. If you um, buy models in my area, which is the GTA. It's the Greater Toronto Area in Ontario. If you buy them off my website, uh, what I try to do is because you're in my area, I try to help you out, and uh, I'll, I'll, what I'll what I'll do is I will uh, try to include some tools and things that um, I can't necessarily do online because of shipping reasons. Things get super expensive when you're doing shipping. It's something that I've uh, been trying to adapt and learn about. But if you're in the area here, um, what I try to do is uh, you know 
with tweezers and things. I try to give you a hand to getting your hands on some. Um, I've been trying to find a good set of tweezers to put on my website for people to uh, purchase because I get asked a lot uh, about like tools and what tools should I buy, what tools are good, what tools aren't good. And that's such a personal preference when it comes to these builds, um, to be totally, totally honest. Um, but I do have some preferences with things. And because I've built a couple of these builds, I feel like I know what tools are super necessary and what tools aren't. Um, like for instance, uh, a good set of pliers can replace a lot of the tools that I actually have here. Um, but you just gotta know the, the methods of how to use them. You know, there's, there's different styles and there's many different ways to use a hammer, right? And so it's important to understand that you can do some pretty cool stuff with some basic tools. Um, even just, a, you know, you really, and with these models, you really don't need anything but just, just your tweezers to get them built. It's just a matter of how hard you wanna work, right? Okay. Take this here. Kind of come through the middle. Cool. There we go. Awesome. Okay. And uh, now that that's in there, we can just go ahead and give a little twist to Rooney. Twisty, 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 twisty. There we go. And now we can grab this guy right here. And we're going to take this little tool here. Whoopsie. Wrap her around like we've done before. Again, we're really pressing on the edges here. There we go. Bring it in here like this. There we go. And now we're going to grab the uh, little edges here and just push up. And there we go. Whoop! Oh no! Man down, man down! Just kidding, I found it. Um, that was almost a serious issue. You know, one of the worst things that can happen is uh, I actually have carpet underneath my work desk. And, um, you know, I've seen the memes out there, and it's so true. Nothing is worse than when you lose a piece in your carpet. And um, you know what's actually really funny? Um, I bought a magnet fishing set a while ago, and um, I, I might have it in my room, and I might use it when uh, I lose a part in my carpet. You know, some people throw it in the water, I just throw it on my carpet, and uh, you'll be very surprised how quickly I can find pieces. Um, I, I think it's a little bit overkill, but you know, a 70 pound magnet or 80 pound magnet uh, pulling force works uh, you know, pretty well. Okay. Again, this goes um, right. I wanna make sure I'm doing this. Cr I did, I, oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Okay, so. Did you see what I did? Anyone? No? Okay, well, I'll tell you what I did. I, in my silliness, 
install this piece right here without installing the band first. Now I am going to attempt to do it anyway. I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna see if I can. But uh, I mean, really, I should just take it apart. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. It's because I was rushing. Um, let me see if I take this right here and flatten it out. Take this right here and flatten it out too. We will pretend like nothing happened. See? Nothing happened. <laughs> what? What do you mean? What do you mean? There was no nothing missed. You saw nothing. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Now I gotta play, uh, play the blind game. No, I don't. We're not gonna play the blind game. We're gonna use smaller tweezers. See, now this is what I say, like people ask me sometimes, how long does it take to do a build? And um, I am really a big component of the fact, again, that like, it's not about how long it takes you to do a build. It's more about how much A, you enjoyed it, and B, how much time you put into it. Because if you rush a build, just for the fact that, oh, hey, yo, I built uh, I built R2-D2 in five minutes flat. Well, congratulations, buddy, but uh, your little, your uh, legs there look a little crooked, your toe, all that stuff, right? And did you have fun, or were you too busy stressing about trying to get it done as fast as possible? Th these are the things that you gotta think about, right? It's always important to have fun. <laughs> this little tab went to market, and this little tab went in the hole. This little tab gave me problems until I forced it in the hole. Hey! I want to try to get this finished before 11. I doubt that I'm going to be able to, um, but I would like to get this booster finished before I quit the live stream today, guys. So I will stay on until I'm finished it. And um, then when I'm finished this little booster here, tomorrow we will move on to the bigger booster and actually the bottom as well. And I want to see how all these magnets are going to be incorporated. I want to see if I can actually get everything to snap together and, and see if it all actually works the way I intend it to. It'll be kind of cool. But uh, again, that'll be tomorrow on tomorrow's uh, live stream or part three if you're viewing this in the future. Oh, also... Um, so one of the things I really want to do is I want to try to again like involve the community here as much as possible in my videos Especially in these live streams I want to you know get you guys coming out more often and hanging out with me here while I do these builds So I thought about it would be kind of fun for us to have uh, maybe some community um, uh, Stuff like um, I'm thinking it, I, I think it'd be kind of cool to start a subreddit and uh, maybe put some memes in there, or if you guys have some projects and some ideas and things you want to share, you could place them in there, and then um, I could actually uh, go through that on some videos. Um, I think that would be kind of cool. Also, if you guys are talented, if you got some really cool, I know I got some really talented viewers out there. Um, if you guys want to try to make any kind of um, neat little animations or splashes, uh, any of that kind of stuff for me, um, I would love that, and I would gladly uh, use them in the stream and give you guys full credit for them. Um, if you're an artist and you got some cool stuff that you can send me in a profile, like if you got like a little, um, excuse me, uh, book of your work, 
why can't portfolio thank you um i would love to take a look at it and um um yeah if it's if it fits the style i would love to be able to use that for the uh, overlays and things so and again students um if you're a new artist if you're just you know if you, if you draw in your spare time and you uh and you think you got something don't uh, don't be afraid to show it and send it to me i would love to see it and um maybe who knows maybe i'll be able to use you and uh maybe put you inside of the uh the links because again i want to be able to build this up a little bit um i, I really want like a rocky um what's it called rocky and bullwinkle-esque kind of art attack show um eventually that's the plan of rooney but just all live okay now that we got to this point we pretty much are ready to close her up This is where I get a little bit nervous because I don't want I don't want that that little part there to happen. Um, let's see here. Yeah. I'm thinking I maybe should have. Um, bent this a little more before actually putting the detail on um, because now that we have those tabs on the inside they actually don't allow for my tool to completely form like I did my other ones so now I'm having to use my tweezers here in the center to try to get that rounded out flat enough that the um, the tabs will be able to get into their spot it's not a super big uh, problem but um, it's a little bit of an issue where you have metal on like dual layers of metal, especially like near the bottom where I'm bending right now. Like you can see that it's actually like there's a lot of resistance right here. And that's because I'm bending two pieces of metal. And now when I try to get down here, um, the longer I reach, the less actual um, uh, pressure force I have my my little girl here. I don't, I don't know if you guys can hear her in the back or not, but she is just going she's zooming she's running out just chasing rabbits or something but man she's going so cute anyway um the problem i'm having though again is that when you get down to this area here you're gonna hear her eventually and you guys are gonna laugh um she uh sorry when you get down to this area here as you're trying to use your tweezers you have less force so because you have less bending force you actually it becomes really hard to get this to bend the proper way so you have to do what I'm doing now, but this you'll see kind of creates a warp inside the metal. So again, guys, it's give and take. Um, I'm gonna try my best to not warp the metal because we don't want that. It makes everything look ugly. And we want people to look at our models and be impressed, right? Excuse me. That coffee from Mexico is spreading the love there. There we go. Okay, now that we got that here, we can go ahead and grab these guys, just like we did before, bend them back. go whoop, whoop. just just throw that anywhere you like oh my lord I'm so sorry guys my stomach is growling I need to go you guys eat something I do apologize. I'll try to stay away from the microphone so you don't hear me, my growls there. There we go. Cool. I actually uh, went to the ROM, which is the Royal Ontario Museum, this past weekend, and uh, I had a really good time. Uh, actually, was it this past weekend? 
actually it was the weekend prior um and it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun i actually haven't been to the rom in quite a long time and um it was it was a lot of fun to go and see all the exhibits but as a space nerd i was a little bit disappointed uh, they didn't really have a whole lot of stuff on space there. I do know that they um, have quite a bit of stuff of space over at the what we call the Science Center here in uh, Toronto. And um, I usually take my family there at least once a year. It's one of my favorite places to go. Uh, when I was in elementary school, we used to go there on field trips. And it's like one of those places that I remembered as a kid like being one of my favorite places to go. So as an adult, I was like... I have adult money now and I can spend it on cool places and I went there with my little guys and I have been going there every single year and what's so funny is that uh, eventually when my kids go there on field trips they're going to know those places like the back of their hands and hopefully be able to answer the question sheets like super quick time and then they'll just be able to play around and have fun and it's things like that that'll be, that'll be hey my dad did something cool here <laughs> Also, too, getting them involved in uh, in science and getting them involved in that kind of stuff at an early age is a really cool thing to do. Uh, nothing's nothing's really kind of neater than watching your kids get, kind of get awestruck by what they're seeing. Um, yeah. And we can always be fascinated by things, but uh, looking at it through the eyes of a child and seeing that uh, that miraculous moment, I think, is always something that speaks louder than any adult can try to articulate. I don't think we can even articulate it with words what we see or feel when we see our child um, express wonder in that way. It's very cool. Anyway, get to the cone here. I'm going to bring these out because these guys, these are our last four pieces of the live stream today. And um, I'm going to get ready to do that with you. So let's go ahead and again, we're going to pivot this little guy here. Okay. There we go. Now I'm making some big decisions with my fingers here and that is what I'm doing. Cool, cool, cool. Getting that cone. Also, let me know what you think here about this idea. I would love to hear it in the comments. If you're watching this later on or if you're in the live stream right now, I love you guys. Um, do me a favor. Let me know what you think about this idea. Um, when it comes to our pieces like this, where we're bending the uh, same pieces over and over again, my question becomes, is it better for you guys for me to bend these pieces prior to time? So like pieces that we're doing multiple times over and over and over again. So like, okay, I built the one booster here. If I was to have the other booster already complete, would that be better for a live stream? Or would you prefer me to see everything raw right from the beginning? Um, so, you know, you get the full thing. Because, I, I mean, honestly, if I was to go through here and, and kind of bend some of the repeat detail, it would probably make these videos a little bit shorter and allow for more, more entertainment, but it would have less of the content in terms of, um, you know, bending and shaping and stuff. I would love to hear your feedback on that. I'd love to hear your ideas on that. Um, yeah, let me know. going around here also too so uh, my friends out there right now actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close that cone like we did last time and follow the same method way better of a way of doing that I'm gonna get a better uh, seal on that cone if I can get that off there we go um, but what I was saying there if you guys can let me know about the music I would really appreciate it so right now what I'm doing is I'm streaming a uh, loft um, space <laughs> space station here, if you will. 
all with the music that were just kind of calm little vibes, nothing too crazy, just something nice in the background going as we attempt to build these amazing little architectural builds. And um, I want to know your feedback on that. Do you guys like the music? Does the music fit? Does it put you asleep? Would you like some more intense music? I mean, we can put on some crazy, like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger inspired, inspired techno, or we can do, you know, some hardcore metal music to kind of play off the whole, we're building 3D metal models, yeah, you know, kind of a thing. Um, up to you guys, though. Let me know what kind of music you guys want to hear. Personally, I'm all about the uh, electronic jazz, um, but I'll mix it up. I try to go with music that's themed uh, for the builds. Uh, if you ever pay attention to that, I don't know if you guys have or not, but when I'm building um, my different ones, I always try to come up with some music that fits what we're doing, hence the space build. We're listening to a space station loft music. Again, just so we're all on the same page. I've lined this up. The little cap here on top is pressed down. All of our seams are good to go. Now what do we need to do? We need to put the magnet in. That's right. We need to put the magnet in. So we're going to place the magnet right here. Now, again, don't ask me how magnets work. I'm not entirely too sure. I might have to put some clown makeup on to emphasize the joke, but I'm not too sure. Now, are we on the right side of things? Oh, ho, 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 ho. So groove builders, if you take a look inside that little tube there, let me show you the little tube. Focus, focus. There we go. You can kind of see the magnet there. Um, it's on the wrong side. Remember what I said? You don't want to put it on this side. You want to put it on this side. So I need to listen to my own instructions. And uh, luckily I can actually just turn that down and pressure. And she's about center right there. Okay, cool. Now we can move on to the little doming part. Let's grab a little dome here. And just like we've done before, a little presserune. Yeah, look at that shaping. I've shown I've shown some people that, and they're kind of uh, they're kind of blown away by how fast that actually shapes that. And how well it does too. It's not just about how quickly it shapes the uh, part, but also how accurately it shapes the part. But even like you just saw there where um, I warped it a little bit, it's not that big of a deal um, because um, I can always take my piece like this, put the ball back in and um, get it nice and shaped back out the way I want it to. So like that little piece right here, you can kind of see I did get a little bit of a hot spot there. I'm gonna work that out. Yeah. See, we got this. We got these. Put these up 90 degrees. And now we're going to put the white side down. Cool. Going all the way around town. There we go. There we go. And bend these guys down. Cool. Awesome. Now, we take this piece here. La -la -la. Why can't... There we go. I got gotcha. you. And same thing as we've done before. Just a little bit of a whoop. There we go. Do it again. Whoop. A little bit more pressure, maybe. Maybe I go a little smaller this time. Whoa. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Oh, that's a little too too big. That's overkill. I was just thinking about this too, while I'm here repeating the same details I've done before. You know what would be kind of cool is uh, with this build, because I do have all of the uh, pieces here uh, put together with magnets, 
Oh, I did it again. I did it twice in a row. Can you guys believe that? Ah, oh, man. Take that like that. Unbend the tab. I'll continue my thought in a moment. It's the ADHD that kind of helps me move around a little bit there. Not that one. This one. I totally lost my train of thought on that one. I'll come back to it in a minute. Focus on the rocket at hand. Did you go in the hole? No, you did not. Listen, I know you don't like the struggle, so just just do what I just do what I say. Just uh, you know, follow follow the rules. And apparently, you'll be all fine. There we go. Tabaruni. Tabaruni. Tabaruni and the last Tabaruni. Success. Success! Alrighty. Did I did I did I do that? I did, didn't I? I'm a silly goose. I'm a silly goose and, and, and none of you none of you said nothing. None of you said a thing. Oh man. Oh man. No oh, man. I'm just kidding. We can easily fix this. Um, all of our parts are actually uh, bent correctly. I'm a little worried about this little tab here, but, you know, we'll get it worked out. Um, you know, it's only 30 minutes past the time I said I was going to be on here, but it's okay. We're going to just finish this up because I'm going to show you guys how I correct my mistakes. So I should have realized this um, from the beginning. And oftentimes, Metal Earth, their engineers do this in a way where you can't actually mess this up. But because these pieces are so similarly shaped and so similarly uh, um, in size, so they're so similar in size, uh, they can actually fit in the same place. Like oftentimes, if uh, one of these guys here that are similar shaped, one will have like four tabs and the other one will have three. So if you accidentally misplace the tab or misplace the part um, you'll know because you can't you just won't fit together well in this case here um, both of them are exactly the same and they actually fit in both areas so you you don't really know um, until you mess up like I just did there and again because I have all of my parts out on the table and I'm bending multiple pieces at once it makes it a little bit harder for me to kind of keep the uh, order of things and um, I might have to look into a solution in the future so I don't do that anymore. And like I said, there, is, there are solutions out there. There's this thing called a nulling board, uh, which basically you put together and you put all your pieces. Each piece um, goes into a spot and you can, you can designate like, you know, one step has all the pieces in that step or you can do one number has like, you know, one part up to you, totally up to you, your organization, your way. I actually have a uh, tool here that I've been working on for perfect cylinders and um, are yeah perfect cylinders and uh, it's a 3d printed tool I'm still kind of working it out um, the way I'm thinking about it is you know not everybody can bend a cylinder um, and again shaping shaping cones like this is kind of hard too so the idea would be that you could shape these parts with very little effort and uh, all you need is a little piece of leather i know it sounds crazy but trust me i've been playing with it and it seems very promising 
The only issues that I'm running into right now is consistency with parts. And I want something that can be more reliable and something that I can print quicker um, so that like, if, for instance, if I can print more than one at a time, that would be best as opposed to like having just to print one and um, at a time think I should be able to do that method that I talked about earlier, but we'll see. Actually, it's probably best for me to take this apart again just before I even start it. No, I think we can rock it. There we go. Mm -hmm. Push her in there and locked. Bonus. Look at that. Hold on. We, ladies and gentlemen, have done it. Now I'm going to just take a quick little look here at the next page. You guys can probably see that on the screen. I know it's small. Um, I am going to be working on that to make it a little bit better. In the next stream tomorrow, I might be able to do that. Um, I might keep it consistent though, just for this particular build, and I might go over some of these other things in the um, in the next uh, in the next model uh, in my future uploads too. Uh, my plan is to do an actual group builders episode on this and I'm going to do like a super cut of all this and try to make like a 10 minute episode. And in that I'm going to um, kind of hyper cut all this and, and do the kind of the fun stuff. So if you just want to take a look at those, you will be able to do that. Um, let me just make sure we are hundred percent before I take off for the night. I think that looks really good. Now will these stick together because of the magnets they have them in them? Yeah. Look at that! See? Sticking together. Sticking together. That's awesome. Love it, love it, love it. So in this build, we've finished up our little uh, shuttle here. At least the uh, two wings. The wings look good on either side. That is a look from the back there. I think that is awesome, awesome. And we also built these two boosters. Now, one thing we found with these boosters is that they were pretty simple to complete overall. However, creating the big cylinder um, and getting the proper shaping can be pretty complicated. These little bits of detail here, uh, these little string bits are definitely not easy to handle. They're a little bit tricky. But outside of that, the other parts, the cones, those were pretty easy to keep consistent, even though this one here isn't properly capped. Overall, I think this was a pretty sex. Blah, blah, blah. Overall, I do think this was a pretty successful day. And Groovers, I've had a really good time building with you. And if you guys have had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. And if you're new here, press subscribe as well. So we have all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future, including some really cool 3D printed projects, which I'm excited to share with you all once we get them out the door. Until next time, Groovers, keep building. Also, I'm going to see you all here on tomorrow, right? Like, you're going to come join me, right? All right that's good. That's good. See you tomorrow.